Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about fixing our water system. Our pump broke. Um, we don't know why it broke. We never got to the bottom of why it broke. But this is how we fix it. And we've added another piece of equipment into the system, an accumulator. And hopefully this will help our pump last a little bit longer. Anyway, this is what happened. Just walking past the van. Making a noise like the pump's running. I'm just checking none of the taps are open. But the pump is definitely running and it's hot. Right, let's do some checks. <laughs> so that is hot. That's been running for a while. I've just been in the front of the van and I could hear I could hear the pump running and I wasn't quite sure why it was running. So hmm, not sure what's going on there. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take this apart and see what's going on. Well, I've come to the conclusion this is uh this is shot at. So it's not lifting on this side, so I would say the diaphragm has gone in here. Um, so we're just going to change the pump out. I've had a look to see if I can buy a diaphragm kit. There's nothing on the internet, so for 70 quid we can get a new one. This is a, a Trail 7, and we're actually going to put a Trail 10 in, which gives us a little bit more pressure. So I've disconnected it here, we just have a little 12 volt junction box. Um, this powers the toilet flush and and the pump so pretty straightforward job just split it off with the twist connector there on the gauze side and this was just a John Guest fitting and we use the adjustable to take that off obviously these are just straightforward way goes and we just lifted the retaining clip and got the two cables out so I'll swap that off put the new one on and we'll see how we fare. fair just a quick point as well obviously there's still water in this side of the system so I've opened the tap and when we cracked this seal we had to catch quite a bit of water and then it's obviously dripping a little bit because the whole system isn't empty and um, it's just fell to this level in the van so we've got the shower head that had some in some water in and obviously the supply to the tap at the sink so just bear that in mind when you release this it will it should still have water in obviously it wasn't pumping water this side so it wasn't pressurizing this side so we'll swap it out in there well to look at them they're exactly the same one slightly taller than the other but that could just be the fact that we've uh, compressed the mounts but maybe not Oh yeah, the rubbers are slightly different, slightly different height. So, looking at them, they are pretty much exactly the same. Apart from maximum flow is obviously higher on this one. This is 10.6 litres per minute and this is 7 litres per minute. There you go. That's That other number is gallons per minute, so... American company, Mexican made, but uh, yeah, that's it. Only difference, same motor size, I think. Not sure, but uh, well, actually, this this bigger one draws less amps. Look. Anyway, boring stuff that for you, no doubt. Fascinating for me. <laughs> so I've added a little bit of a split containment there, split conduit to the back just to protect these cables because I intend to run the cables down there so I don't want them rubbing and that should give it a little bit of protection. Okay time to put this in so that will sit down there like that and we just need to line everything up. We'll put the awkward screw in first because that is the hardest one. You see, still got water. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Just, just empty yourself on me. Right. 
that's all we need. I think that's safe then, to be honest. Yeah, we need to try and stop that. I'm going to shut the tap. Oh, that's not doing what I wanted it to do. Shit, a little flood on here. No, you can go tell. It's putting out a lot more water than, than it was before. Bloody hell. Let's get some screws in. I'll just let it drip onto there for now. Hopefully. There you go. I've opened the drain valve. So this time I'm actually going to fit an accumulator as well because I wondered if by not fitting an accumulator that the sudden stops and starts that we use on the shower maybe had a, an adverse effect and the accumulator may take that pressure that that sudden it you know may absorb that pressure change rather than the diaphragm absorbing it all the time that's my thinking anyway so if I change the pump out first I can then do the diaphragm once we get, once it arrives, because <laughs> the pump come Royal Mail and the day from has come on Amazon, even though I ordered them off the same company. I'd say one must be stocked by Amazon, that on the for the company, and the other isn't. But this one got here quicker, and this is the one that come direct from the cellar. How rigid is that? That's not too bad. We have a little piece of split container here as well for these two. There you go. Looks tidy, doesn't it? Connect these into the Legos. Always give them a little security pull. Now, because we're dealing with water, and right beside our 12 volt, I would suggest getting this lid on as quickly as you, well, before you start testing. Spin that round. Let's line that up so it doesn't squirt. So let's make that connection as quickly as possible. Right, I believe that's everything connected back up. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, 
full. We have no leaks. Maybe I should have waited for the accumulator to come. <laughs> right, I'm happy that that has been a successful job. We'll just be like... Oh. <laughs> I just... I just caught the drain valve there and uh, that released some of the pressure. I'll just call it a bit easier this time. Yeah. There we are, slow a bit. Oh. Let the air out nice and slowly. Thing is, I'm going to have to repeat all that again, aren't I, when I put this accumulator on? I should have waited, but I'm a little bit impatient. I wanted to make sure that that was the fault. Anyway, we've fixed it now. It, I believe it is the diaphragm. I'm going to take the top off now, have a quick look. If it is the diaphragm, I'll have a look, see if we can get it replaced, and we'll keep that one as a spare. Yeah, we've stripped it out. Can't see anything too obvious with the diaphragm. There's obviously something wrong with it, you know. Um, it sits in there, like so. There's three screws go in. Potentially could be leaking around one of them screws. That one there doesn't look too hot. So it just, it wasn't lifting. So that was the problem we had. Um, so the pump was running constantly because it couldn't get pressure. So I looked into getting a new diaphragm. 40 quid was the cheapest I could find one, so it only cost me six for a new, um, bigger pump. So I've gone from the Trail 7 to the Trail 10, and obviously we've got that accumulator as well, because I think maybe that constant punching of stopping the water maybe, maybe did, did damage this. So this time we'll have the actuator on, that'll absorb some of the impact, um, but yeah. That's where we are. Not worth replacing, not worth repairing, sorry. Only worth replacing. So, for 27 quid more, less hassle, just change it out for a new one. I don't know if you can see it there, but it does tell you the cut-off pressure. Switch-off pressure is 45 bar. Uh, sorry, 45 psi, it's 3.1 bar. This here is set at 0.9 bar when it's delivered so we need to pump that up to nearly that but without exceeding 3 bar in here so what we'll do is we'll take it up to 40 bar uh, for 3 bar and uh, we'll just leave it at that but this here the rule of thumb is that you should have the pressure set in your accumulator to the same pressure as the switch in here so let's get on and do that so I've got this little mountain bike pump here <laughs> and on there we've got five bar you know it goes up to five bar um, PSI is on the outside so if we say 45 bar 45 sorry 45 PSI is halfway between if you look at that notch there that is round about three bar so I think we'll take it up to the 40 mark on the um, on the gauge. We don't want to run this as right up there. So with this, we just twist that on. We have that all the way out. Don't know if you can see that. Let me just tilt you back a little bit. So we screw this on here so it goes tight, and then we screw this in. And we should see that gauge start to go up once it makes contact. There you go. It's moving 
slowly. Right, I think that's about 40. So I'm not going to take it all the way up to 3 bar. I'll just keep it somewhere near. And then what we do is we screw that back out. And then we screw that off. And that should be us set up. So inside here there's like a bladder. Basically the water comes in. This bladder here is like a shock absorber. So when we turn the tap off, rather than this just um, like rather than the pipe take all the shock there's a bladder in here that will absorb that shock also when you turn the tap on it will give you a constant flow of pressure so it's it's pushing so as soon as you open the tap it releases the water and when you when you turn the tap off the water builds up like the pressure will push against this bladder and this switch will recognize that there's the tap shut and it'll put the switch into play and stop the pump. That's it. That's all this does. It just it's like a shock absorber for your water system and it'll give you a constant flow of pressure as well as soon as you turn the tap on. Job done. Hopefully that will protect this. Um, previously I think not having an actuator on the system damaged the diaphragm in the pump. So Lasted two years, the last pump. This is a bigger pump, so I'm hoping we'll get, with this arrangement, a bit more longevity out of it. Last a bit longer than two years anyway. Right, let's go and check it. Right, moment of truth. So we've ran it previously. We've now got the actuator in place. We've primed it. Let's see how it behaves. Now, I, I don't know what to expect here yet. It might have a little bit of air in, I doubt it, but we'll see. So that's that started then, and I don't know if you noticed the lights dip. Um, that, just watch, there you go. Pump cuts off. Um, don't know why the lights are dimming, but obviously that's drawn a little bit of power when it pulls. But as soon as I switch it on, look, run in, and then the pump kicks in right there. So that pressure, that actuator is working, and there's pressure there before we. Before the switch comes on, turn it off. So the pump ran on for a little bit longer and then it stopped. So let's do it again. And there you, you can see the light flick. Ran on. I'm happy with that. Jobs are good. <laughs> One less thing to worry about now. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that video. And uh, until we see you next again, take care. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.